Hi there, thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're going to look at ways in which you can add beads to your dorset ring buttons as you're making them. So, let's get started. The first method I'm going to show you is working beading on your spokes as you lay your wraps. So for this particular button, I am going to lay eight wraps for 16 spokes. I want each of those spokes to have a bead. So I have gone ahead and threaded 16 beads onto my length of thread. Now, the eagle eye amongst you will notice I have not slicked the edge. I've not slicked the edge because of the second technique that I'm going to show you. However, this works perfectly well this in the um, actual spokes with a slicked edge or without a slicked edge. It will all become clear as I work. So, in the usual way, we're going to lay our first wrap so bottom to top, okay? So you need to sort of hold your button on the edges. Now before you lay around again, you're going to drop two beads and then you'll lay your wrap. Hold on to it and slide the beads top and bottom. So as you can see, you could use long beads here like bugle beads or shaped beads as well, or you could use more than um, one either side and then I'm going to just slightly rotate to lay the next spoke and again I'm going to shove <laughs> those beads top and bottom so I don't want them to be sitting at the center I want them to be placed where they're going to be placed otherwise it'll be really difficult later and again each time sort of dropping down two beads, one for the top of the spoke and one for the bottom of the spoke. Now on this particular button, the beads and the size of the beads, even though they're not uniform beads, they're just standard you know, seed beads where some of them are the same size and some of them are bigger, is pretty much uh, the spacing that I'll need as well. So it, it's uh, works out quite well actually to help you get everything even. Just remember to put one top and one bottom. It becomes easier. I'm sort of going in slow motion to make sure that this stays and is caught on the film, but of course you'll get the knack and it'll be much easier when you're working yourself. Okay, so there we have all of the spokes, each with a bead, and this particular bead is a little bit bigger, so it just needs some coaxing into place. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work the center and the rounding back stitches in exactly the same way. Now, I have positioned these right up to the edge. You could, if you had room, you could move them. You could perhaps move every other and work your stitches, that's entirely up to you. But I would suggest the first time you try this method, work them as close to the edge as you possibly can. It's much easier to start off with. The next method for adding beads is going to be a method to add them to the edge. I'm using a uh, fine thread, slightly different to, I've used a pearl cotton to do the actual uh, button, but this is um, a sewing thread that is finer. It's actually a uh, wonderful spaghetti. So I'm just gonna add a length. I've tied a little knot there. You can do this obviously much neater, and I do have uh, a video which I'll link to below on adding threads. And I've come up in the ridge. And so what I'm going to do, get my beads over here, is I'm going to 
add a bead and then I'm going to work a second blanket stitch through the edge. And that just sort of fastens in that bead. And so for each bead, that's all I need to do. Add a bead, work through the ridge of the uh, blanket stitch that we covered the ring with, and then carry on. So I will carry on and do that all of the way around. And so there is the button with a beaded edge. Now you can use beading thread for this stage as well. You don't need to use a, a matching thread. You could use a different thread. You don't need to see it sort of in the edges there anyways. Um, but it's a nice versatile way and I think it adds to the button still enabling it to be a button, not just for a decorative piece. What I like to do is I like to go back through each bead one more time in a straight row. Um, I just feel this gives the edge a little bit of extra strength. Um, it's not vital that you do this, but I, I just personally like it. So that is one option. And then just fasten off at the edge or at the back as you prefer. The other thing with this particular type of edge is that you can also go ahead and work um, other fancy uh, pico steps and so on. Um, if you are a more experienced beater, that's how you can then use this as a base and carry on. The next method for adding beads to the edge is great if you were planning on doing something else or thought afterwards, oh, actually, I'd really like to pop some beads on the edge of this. For this particular method, I like to use the same thread as I've used to cover the ring. You don't have to, but you will see the thread. So it, it's worth bearing that in mind. So I'm just attaching a thread. And I'm going to work one small blanket stitch just to get this lined up. And I'm working around and over the top of the previous blanket stitches. And then I'm just going to add beads in exactly the same way as I did previously. And in case you're wondering, this particular button, these beads were added um, as I laid the spokes. And so you can add your bead and work your blanket stitch. And I'm just going around the whole ring. And then I'll work, I'll add a bead, work the next one. Now you can space these out when you're doing this because you can sort of fit them in between. So I'm working in between the spokes right now. I'm not splitting any threads. So that will take me through and you see they twist a little when you first start out but we'll go through and fix that in a minute so i'm going to put probably two in between each spoke okay so this will sort of emphasize the spacing but don't worry you can just keep putting them on and you they'll even out if you try to place them close together they will even themselves out actually that one's twisted let's just untwist the previous one shall we right that's why it wouldn't lay flat that's better if you have an issue with beads not sort of doing what you want them to do when you're doing a blanket stitch. It's usually because the thread has twisted around the bead incorrectly. So again, I will carry on and do these. And so there we have it. Another way of adding the beads 
on the edge. If you keep your tension tight enough, you shouldn't even see the holding thread that you've used because you're using the same color. And so that's a really nice way of adding. As before, go around a second time or add picots or anything else. And it's just a really nice way of adding beads to the edge. Traditionally, dorset ring buttons with beads around the edge are known as spangles. I don't know how old that term is. It's going to be something from the revival in the um, 1900s, um, not from the early dorset buttons, definitely. Um, but the name could come from the sort of later revivals in the 30s or 40s. And so another way to add beads. Now, as you can see, I have covered the ring, I've done my casting, I've slicked the edge, I've laid my spokes. I've done the first round of rounding back stitches and I've actually gone over two spokes and that's because of the size of my bead. It doesn't matter, there's no rules here. You can do as you um, wish and as works best for you. So the first method is to work as you're working your rounding back stitches. So you sort of come up, pick up a bead, and in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the bead, because I'm working over two, so sort of gonna lay the bead in between two spokes. So it just sits there on the top of those two spokes. And then I'm going to come over to the next two to work the next rounding back stitch. And it takes a little while to get this established. And again, I'm using irregular beads, so um, the way that it looks is going to be different than if you were using regular beads, all nice and even. The thing you've got to be careful of when you're working your beads directly as you're rounding back stitches is that you don't overcrowd, which of course can be difficult with the irregular beads, um, and that you consider their placement. And this doesn't have to be over two. You can just do over, um, work your rounding back stitch over one. If you're doing a fancy spiral pattern, for instance, you can work the spiral pattern using the beads. And um, it, you just have to basically concentrate on the placement because the beads will want to do what the beads want to do. And your um, job is to put them as sort of, neat and tidily as you can. And do the stitch before you pick up the bead would be really helpful. If you've got a big enough gap, it doesn't matter, but. The other thing that I would say is don't have your tension too tight because if it's too tight, you may find that um, you see, I've done that there, so let's come up with the bead. Can we pop that up? Yeah. Uh, if your tension is too tight, then again, your beads can sort of go wherever they want to go, not where you want them to go. And then it's harder to get it right. Now with this method, it can be a nice idea, but it's certainly not um, vital, is to work another plain row 
and then work a bead row and a plain row and a bead row. You can also, um, as the spokes spread out and you have more room, you could put two beads or you could work over every spoke or, and so on. It really depends on the design that you're actually following, bearing in mind that the beads will sort of take over. But if you're just using a basic um, cross wheel design, then I would suggest going over two and spreading out a bit. So I will do a couple of more rows um, just so you can see what it looks like. So with this particular button, what I ended up doing was the first row, as you saw. The second row, I worked one row of plain rounding back stitch with the um, thread only, which you can't see. Then the next row, I actually worked on the opposite two spokes. So because I was working rounding back stitches over two spokes, the next I went over the other two spokes so that the bead sat, because this, the, these beads were perfectly sized to do this, so that the bead sat just a little off. And then the row after that, the same as the first row. So sort of looking like a brick. Um, that worked really, really well uh, with this size bead, as I said. It meant that everything sort of lays nice and neat. You can see from the side view, it's nice. It's really quite flat considering there are regular beads. And of course, from the back, you've just got your plain uh, back, just as you would with a regular dorset button. So that's a nice way of doing it. You can also as I said, you can put the through every spoke, every other spoke, every three spoke, whatever best suits your bead and your design. And of course, you mustn't forget that you can always just sew beads into place as you would any other bead embroidery. Just a few little things to remember. Obviously, you need a needle and thread that will fit your chosen bead but try to use a pointed needle. Because dorset buttons are worked in rounds, you usually have gaps between each of those rows. So if you can use a pointed needle, you can split the thread on your way up and split the thread on your way down. And that will mean that you've got a better chance of making sure that that bead does not pop through to the bottom and so you can add a little bit of sparkle. So as I said, I'll just come up and I will split, make sure that I split some threads. Don't come up in the actual row and don't drop back down in the same place. Make sure that you, you've moved your stitch over a little bit. And then you can just add beads wherever you wish. That's great if you just want to add a little bit of extra sparkle. So just a few extra beads to add a little bit of extra oomph to the center of that button and of course you can just keep going and going and going whatever suits you best and so there are some ways in which you can add beads to your dorset buttons as you're making them thanks very much for watching i hope that you found that useful and do please click like hit subscribe leave me a comment i love to hear what you're doing and how you're getting on with everything until the next time, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.